All right, hello everybody, welcome. It is time for the uh, first round of 16 match for the 2021 World Cup. This is Azer, and today I am joined by this one guy. Hello, good evening. How's it going? Pretty good. Uh, this is a bit of an early match, I think. It's pretty rare that we get like a like a Friday night Friday night match. I guess it's morning for China, but yeah. We've got uh, we've got uh, Argentina versus China today. Two teams that unfortunately did not get to score a point in the round of 32, considering they're pretty low seated, so they had pretty tough opponents. I think they should be a little bit more evenly matched though this time around. Yeah, I think um, based on their results in qualifiers, based on you know kind of the performance that they showed in their round of 32 matches, despite uh, both getting swept 5-0, um, I think these two teams both actually do have some potential, and I do think, as you said, they'll uh, be relatively evenly matched. Kind of those important players from both teams, you know, the Emery Kuno pair uh, and Slowburn from Argentina, China, of course, uh, Genshin Phobia, Burger Fox. Um, milk tea. They've got some players who can do well. Like, these are teams that are not, you know, incapable of playing the pool proficiently. Yeah, I think they're both looking to have a better showing. I don't think they were satisfied with the way they played in round of 32, especially considering that a lot of these players did really well, like, earlier throughout the year. Uh, so, looking to do a little bit more. Uh, I think... I think it's also pretty hard to determine uh, what the other team wants to do here. I think, like like I said, they're very evenly matched, but also like in terms of not only in terms of score, but in terms of their priorities and stuff like that. I think this match is going to be very hard to like predict, if that makes sense. Honestly, I have no idea who's who's winning or what the team plans are, if that makes sense. Like it's very hard to determine. I, I tried, but uh, yeah, they, they've got a little bit of like an open book on both sides. Yeah, I think. Um... You know, based on what we saw in their first round each, um, I think, you know, Argentina probably not going to play, play too much reading stuff. Might look to uh, might look to ban out, you know, like a low AR pick, something along those lines. China, on the other hand, you know, maybe picking some more non-mechanics type of stuff. Uh, they picked, like, the, the tech map in week one, for instance. So, like I said, th there's not direct overlap kind of between these perceived skill sets. Um, and, you know, new week, new pool. Right, this is going to be the first time that we're getting to see the pool played in a match since uh, it was revealed back in the showcase. Um, and so I think that's going to be something uh, that's cool to see as well. Two teams kind of testing the waters for the first time for us here this week. Yes, and I think player reception so far, I'm going to talk about this real quick because this is the first match around at 16, but I think the player reception to this pool has been very exceedingly positive. I think the teams like playing this. There's not a lot not to like, so I think it's going to be pretty interesting to see uh, the teams kind of enjoy themselves beyond just playing, you know, sometimes uh, there's some maps you don't really want to play, but you kind of feel like you have to, but it doesn't seem like there's any of that here. Uh, everyone is kind of a big fan of everything in this pool, which is very nice. Uh, in terms of pick ban, though, I think uh, I'm fully expecting both of the teams to kind of stick to their cards from last round. If you look at uh, the scores and their bans that they're going for, it's expected that China bans Nomad 2, which they just did, mm -hmm. and Argentina is probably looking to ban Hidden 2, which, uh, if there's anything to go off of to compare the teams that would, like, give an advantage to the other team, those are literally the only two maps in the pool that, that like, fit that. Everything else is kind of a toss-up, so I think it's about expected that we see both of those. Yeah, especially, uh, like, this week's Noma, or uh, Hidden 2, excuse me, is, is, again, you know, kind of that linear, older-style aim. It's a little more of a, a throwback-feeling map than last week's, but it does get banned out by Argentina, so no surprises there regardless. And I really am just very curious um, to see what we kind of get out of this pool, what we'll end up seeing. China's gonna run it back to the Nomad 4. That was their first pick last week. It's gonna be their first pick again this week. Um, the Hesperos mapped by a Silica 3D Yoshi spin. What a great diff name. <laughs> this is actually, I, I like this map. I think it's pretty cool. I mean, it does have the cut streams, which can be kind of polarizing, but uh, that nice early round, you know, tech that's like not super crazy, but does test the tech elements that you expect to see. Yeah. Uh, again, this is one of those maps where I think people are uh, liking a lot. Uh, this slot in particular, I think, can tend to be a little bit polarizing, but this, this week is definitely a hit. Uh, I've heard a lot of people actually say this is like the best Nomad tech map they've ever seen in a pool. So we're about to see that uh, pretty soon. I think for China here, I think it might be interesting. They're very likely playing 
their core roster. China likes to play around four players and, and really, really play those four players, even though they have all eight, you know, I think uh, you're expecting to see Genshin Phobia, which is uh, David, if anyone is uh, not up to par with that. I'm a Burger Fox, Cuckoo and Milk Tea or Lolo are going to be playing this, but it looks like maybe not for this map, they're going to be, uh, they're going to bring Strife in, which hasn't really played many maps so far, so this is a bit of a new showing, I think. They didn't really play much last round. I think a lot of these teams, you know, kind of, when you get outside of maybe the, the top 12 to 16, they're going to be reliant a lot more on their their top players. They're a lot top heavier, um, so you're going to see a lot of the same people. You know, you, you've got Amuro, um, Slowburn, Emery Kuno too. Like, I think you're probably going to be seeing a lot of people from Argentina, much like how you're going to be seeing a lot of these few from China. Uh, maybe one or two players swapping out from map to map, but the depth on these rosters isn't really there to the same degree as some of the um, the stronger you know nations, where they can really spread out and have a different four man for a lot of different maps. So I think it's going to be interesting to see because it, it, that means it, it puts a lot of pressure. Um, so we're going to see you know early on how are these guys performing, and uh, you know who's kind of going to be trying to take that early driver's seat position. Um, with uh, China leading off here, Nomad 4, first map of our first match of the week here in round of 16, getting underway. Yeah, I will actually say about Argentina's roster, though, I think they fully utilize the fact that there's eight players. I think something that uh, I found out, which I think is pretty interesting, is uh, there are four DT players or four different players from the Hard Rock roster. So they have four people playing Hard Rock and four other players uh, playing DT, which is really rare. Usually there's a bit of an overlap there. Anyway, we are getting into the first map now. And already a couple of uh, early breaks there in the first couple hundred combo from... Uh, I'm going to call him Milk Tea instead of Lol Lol because that just does not roll off the tongue. Um, he and Slowburn are going to trade uh, the early the early breaks here. So three FCs per team. The uh, accuracy advantage already going pretty heavily in favor of China for the most part. Curious to see, like I said before, they, you know, kind of picked a couple of less mechanic favored maps in their first match, whereas Argentina trended actually more into the mechanics. So, you know, if we see things like the tech and alt maps from China, maybe more likely to see, you know, kind of a straightforward aim or speed map from Argentina the other way. So far, pretty good showing on their first pick, though. I mean, about a third of the way through. Uh, looking pretty strong on this, I think, as you'd expect from their first pick. Uh, yeah, this map showcasing a lot of cut streams, and it is, you, like you said, this was their first pick last round, right? So they're definitely uh, playing into their, their their comfortable ground for now. Yep, and just the difference of Lexalia finding another finding a break. Uh, so they have you know, two missing FCs from Argentina versus versus three FCs are still alive for China. Let's see, I, I it's interesting, you know, because I feel like last year they were a pretty well-rounded team with the roster that they had. Um, adding in, you know, Crystal to their roster obviously makes it a lot stronger. Another break from Lexalia. Um, but I wonder if this year, you know, maybe China focuses more oh. on a specific type of skills. Like, wow! That's... Okay, there goes <laughs> Argentina. They collapsed. <laughs> All right. Yeah, there I thought I had some time to talk while everyone was just keeping combo. I was mistaken. <laughs> and Argentina just goes uh, by the wayside. Well, China is definitely keeping up. No breaks from the from the yeah. very beginning break from Loki there. Look, really strong showing, though. Yeah, this is a very, very good performance here from China. Still carrying um, two Fukamas, very a late break from Strife, unfortunately, but uh, two FC still alive, one large combo. And yeah, this is going to be a very dominant showing here from China. It's going to be close to a million points on the first pick, so definitely that no one more working out well for them. Yeah, this must be super good for them as well. As a reminder, again, both of these teams lost 5-0 in round of 32, so this is this will be China's first map victory in this World Cup, which is pretty good for them. And I, it's very, very decisive. What is that? 1.2 million point difference here off the back of pretty much three FCs, right? Uh, yeah. Almost three FCs. Yeah, we've got, I mean, we've got a little bit of an oopsie from Milk Tea, but Kurumi broke like in the last 40 combo. Uh, burger, I'm a Burger Fox. So it ended up actually only being one FC, but uh, it was, you know, very, very close to being three and one miss away at that from, you know, being four, depending on how much you know credit you want to give those guys. So very, very strong performance there from China. And yeah, as expected, it's straight <laughs> it's into the mechanics. 
We're just we're just doing what we did last week, I guess. <laughs> they're right, just so playing the same stuff. <laughs> all all picks and bans are exactly the way they were last <laughs> yeah. year, uh, last week for both of these teams. China had their Nomad Four first pick, and Argentina had their DT2 first pick. Still the same thing this time around. All right, and that means uh, China's second pick. Um, is already known actually before we even play this map that our second pick's <laughs> gonna be free mod too. <laughs> We're just set. Um, so you know, actually the the free mod one this week is uh, is a CS5 Air 8, and Argentina did ban out the Air 8 hidden. So we'll see what China's strategy is after that. But first, we have to play, of course, the uh, stamina double time pick here. Okay, so I'm a bit curious about this one. This is one of the only maps they shared uh, last round. They both played DT2, and that did come out for China's favor for about 300k. But they played uh, Milk T, who did not really have a good showing, like 500k, 94%, whereas everybody else kept up pretty well, like everyone is close to 99. Uh, I'm wondering, though, they have a lot of other players. Like, Extreme is on this roster, and they did not play last round, so I'm not sure. Like, normally you would... Extreme is a speed player that's, yeah, that's played yeah. in the OWC like several, several times by now, so you would think uh, he should be here. Yeah, but if that's not the case, uh, I'm not sure. Yeah. That dude's been around for a long, long time playing speed stuff. Back to the uh, extra days. Yeah. In, like, what, 2015, I think? Yeah. When he had that name? Um, yeah, we'll have, to, we'll have to see. And Argentina switching up, I think. All but one player, right? We have Richo, Zeta, and Penguo coming in. Um, so a, a big roster swap for... Yeah, for definitely team. looking at Zeta here as well. Zeta's been their DT player. Uh, I'm not sure why Slowburn isn't playing. He was top scorer last round yeah. and also is kind of a very proficient DT player for them, so... His name but... literally used to be Festo Frizu like, before he <laughs> name changed to Slowburn. So yeah, I don't know. Uh, some interesting roster decisions. We don't we don't end up getting extreme. It ends up being Milk Tea, who I think will probably be able to fill for this fine. But it is still a little surprising not to see extreme in for a, a two fifty plus BPM, you know, fairly left hand heavy type of map. But uh, we'll get into it and see what happens. Argentina still seeking their first point of the tournament. China see if they can capitalize on uh, an early pick here into the DT pool from Argentina. Good yeah, definitely it, looking but... on the Argentinian side. Since this is their pick, I already talked about Zeta, but uh, Rico as well. This is their first World Cup, and they I think they were kind of brought in as like a DT speed player, so... Well, hopefully for the best for them, because you always want to see guys coming in having, uh, you know, put on a good performance, try to avoid those early nerves. Uh, Joseph Joestar... Maybe having some internet problems, so we'll keep an eye on that and see what happens over there with him. But otherwise, uh, the other seven players holding on to the early full combos just fine. China internet does tend to be a little hit or miss. I don't know. I, a lot of the China players, I feel like, actually live in the USA. I don't know this year, but uh, historically, if that's been the case, I don't know about this team. But we're going to see what happens. No misses yet, which is good to see, getting through several hundred combos. Yeah, this is unfortunately not new. It's a bit of a recurring theme for the Chinese World Cup teams. It could just be, um, it could just be the client. Yeah, it's hard to say. There is the first break for Argentina out of Penguo during that Ki. Uh, all three of the active players from China still full combo. Of course, they are falling distantly behind, but there's a break from Richo. This could actually get interesting, even as a four versus three, um, if Burger Fox, David, and Milty all continue to hold on to the FCs, regardless of whether or not Joseph Joestar is uh, is actually here or if he had a disconnection. We will await as Zeta and Lexalia try to keep things going for Argentina. About two thirds of the way through, a pair of FCs. Yeah, I think regardless of the DT, if this is actually a 3v4, that would be kind of devastating. Uh, especially if this is Argentina's first pick, probably their strongest pick. And there's a couple more breaks from Richo. There's a break from David, though, unfortunately. So I think any chance China had of a 3v4 uh, is going to fall by the wayside there, and that's going to be Argentina. Uh, depending, I guess, on the situation with Joseph Joestar, 
Um, I think this is going to be pretty much Argentina taking it. Down to just one FC on the board after multi breaks. Oh, okay, he is here. Um, oh my god, that buffer. Okay, well, so <laughs> Joseph Joestar is going to have uh, a long way to go to catch up with the rest of the players. He is starting far behind. Um, so we will have to kind of wait and see here what the MP says. Um, but it does... I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just spoil it here. Uh, Argentina is going to end up winning. Joseph Joestar putting up a 600k score. And Argentina takes the point by about 350k. With the double FC, in fact. Uh, near double FC, I should say. From Lexalia and Zeta. So the newcomer doing a good job. Putting up yeah. a 1.1 million score. Okay, I'm just thankful it wasn't actually DC and it was just some some like internet shenanigans. Yeah. Because it's always a bit of a hassle whenever someone DCs. You don't know if you have to you know redo or not. But nope, he did play. He does have his submitted score on the MP link, and yeah, it, it does go to Argentina. It was fairly close to 300k for uh, for a DT pick. Well, that's not a big gap. I mean, a, you know, it's just a couple of misses here and there. Uh, China ended up without. With, with one FC with very low ack and without any other full combos, it's kind of, you can't really make that up very easily against a near double FC. And it is uh, the one to one, so both teams getting their first point of the tournament on their first picks in this match. And uh, back over to China, and they do go with a free mod one, so they uh, deviate from the script here just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> this is no longer scripted, folks. We are now live. Um, but this makes sense, though. It's the uh, CS5 AR8 free mod pick. We are hitting Daquan live in person. Yeah, we've actually not seen Argentina play a free mod yet. Uh, obviously, China picked the other free mod last round, so I'm not quite sure who they're looking at in terms of mods, but um, I have a feeling we're probably, maybe not in this match, but over the course of the weekend as the other teams play, we're likely to see some more hard rocks on this. Uh, as it is a, a base Air 8 map, right? It's the classic Air 8 CS5 free mod. The good old uh, good old free mod staple since like 2014 or something. <laughs> so like, uh, it, it can be a little bit rough sometimes to, to play this no mod for, for some players. Uh, it's just going to be a lot easier to just straight up just pull extra hard rocks and just not have any no mod. Uh, so we'll see if any of these teams decide to go for that. Yeah, I've been... Uh... Hearing the, hearing the rumors of, of some potential hard rock over mod on this from a lot of the feedback that's been out there, so I think that will not be the unlikely sighting. I mean, it, it's 6.5 is, they're small circles, but they're not, you know, it's not the end of the world. Um, so we're gonna end up, I'm, I'm curious what we're gonna end up seeing, I should say, as the, uh, as the mods in this particular match, as we're trying to sort out the players, I think a couple of guys having a little trouble again. But looks like a Muro, a Marikuno, two Penguo, I think are set. And then Kurumi, Kuku QY coming in for his first map. Joining David and Strife. Um, yeah, when uh, when China played the other free mod, it was Genshin Phobia on the hidden and Strife on the hard rock. No other, no over over mods. And that might be indicative of something. That map that they played pre mod on was the easiest map in the pool, so maybe you would think they would go for a little bit more, but no, it looks like they just have Cuckoo and Bigger Fox uh, play the Nomads. Uh, it looks like they're looking to do the same thing here, most likely. Let's see, it looks like players getting ready, so we should be able to get things set up here for this one. I'm curious to see, like, you know, is Argentina just gonna have to basically have somebody roll tank mod whoever whoever runs hidden on this? Um, as they're a team that has now banned the Ngoi are hidden both times. Like, I'm curious how that player will end up performing. It's going to be Penguo. Oh. There you go. So and, two hard rocks on both yep. sides. Actually, three. Double double over mod for China and complete over mod. So Argentina really not comfortable with low AR. Clearly as they run Hard Rock on all three players that aren't required to use Hidden. Yeah, I think this is just going to be a common thing this weekend. Um, it's not that it's like impossible with no mod or anything, it's just like the skill set that this map has is just a lot more comfortable if you just play with Hard Rock for the majority of the players. So yeah, evidently that is going to be true for Argentina. We'll see if they can uh, catch up against China's pick on this. As a result, we're seeing uh, some very low accuracy from China. Interestingly, though, Argentina doing, uh, doing a pretty good job there in those early goings, uh, despite all the hard rock keeping uh, an accuracy advantage. It's actually kind of impressive. But 
do stuff for the early break on Emeru Ikuno 2. We'll let China take the lead back here once that combo outweighs the cellular accuracy on a few of the players. Keeping an eye on the hiddens as well. Penguo did ahead in accuracy, but he and David both holding the FC until he finds break, as does Amuro. Okay, well, this just got broken open. Yeah, I mean, it's a little bit expected. I think it's pretty hard to keep up, uh, especially on Hidden. Uh, I think you would you could consider Hidden a tank mod on this. Uh, but I mean, just the fact that everyone is, is over modding. Uh, ooh, okay, that's a collapse. Yeah, that's that's a couple that's full the same note, actually. from Argentina. <laughs> <I think laughs> yeah. Um, and now it is down to Strife and Cuckoo QY. With, yeah, there uh, you go. Yeah, they're just gonna kind of run away with this one here. Once we get past the halfway mark, you're gonna see that score gap just exploding because Argentina is not having a great time. Yeah, I mean, honestly, shout outs to, to QQQI for, for doing so well on Nomad. Um, it's going to make the difference here, honestly. Like, if you have that skill set and are able to play it without hitting on this, like, it's. It's essentially just free, so it's probably not hard for him, but it, it is making a difference right now, so. Yeah, having somebody who's reliable on the Air 8 CS5 picks as a Nomad player, I think is like very, very, very valuable. We've seen it on teams kind of across the spectrum. You know, in past years, you, you see top teams, you know, maybe a guy like Vaxay or something, the USA can put in as a no mod on the free mods. And it's just a guaranteed because the map is literally just easier if you have that base skill set. Um, and it's just proven like invaluable to those kinds of rosters. And it's paying dividends here for China as Kuku QI is the now only FC remaining. And they're going to win another pick of their own by over a million points, it looks like. Yeah, they're two Hard Rock players, though, really putting up the work. It is it is also quite hard with Hard Rock, right? It's it's fairly lengthy. There's a solid aim requirement with the precision uh, included in there. But yeah, they're, they're showing. Another source of a big, uh, big score gap here. Actually, a very big yeah, score that's gap huge. here. Yeah, yeah, that was really not close. Million. That's 1.2 million wins on both of China's first two picks, actually. So clearly, you know, finding a skill set or a couple of skill sets that they are far stronger compared to their opponents here. Those are, yeah. like you said, those are quite good scores from uh, Burger Fox and from Strife on, on Hard Rock. All right, Hard Rock. Nope, it's not Hard Rock 2. All it's right. Five. It's Kirby right. time. It's Kirby time. This so is, I believe... Uh, this is also the only other map they shared a score on. Yep. So uh, the speed, the no one speed pick last round was absurdly popular. Um, I think mostly due to it being one of the easier maps in the pool. I think same is going to be said with this one. We've seen a lot of people talk in the, uh, uh, like all of the, the players say, this is, we're not really in the territory of speed yet, even though this, I think, clocks in at like 235 or something like that for most of the map. Uh, but yeah, it's still going to be very, very comfortable on, on a lot of players. Uh, and this did go slightly in favor of China last time around for around 200k score, I think largely off the back of Genshin Phobia and Burger Fox. Uh, but we do have Zeta, who kind of rivaled their performance, actually getting the top score uh, last round between both of these teams, so probably looking at him on the side of Argentina. I think, um, you know, we, we looked at this, uh, this match as kind of being, you know, Argentina picking these types of maps into China. And, and kind of banking on that sort of player and hoping that uh, Zeta can, can put up very, very good scores on the faster picks. But it's it's hard to say, you know, the I guess this is... I, I thought this map looked a decent amount harder than last week's personally, but the players clearly didn't agree. Um, they <laughs> thought it was not any not difficult at all still. Um, so curious wow, to see man, whether people this... People are too fast. Yeah, dude, everybody's, everybody's like left-hand players. <laughs> players, I'm not comfortable with this. I'm not prepared for the world to just be like a billion players out there who can just look at a 250 BPM, you know, stamina map and say, "Oh, this is easy." Uh, not prepared for that reality. But we'll have to see if this ends up being, you know, kind of a couple of FCs per team um, in the way that the DT pick for Argentina was a couple minutes ago. Yeah. 
has like pretty similar rosters here as well. I have like Salia, Zeta, Tango, and Richo is the same roster for Argentina. Bergfox, David, Lol, Lol, Milk Tea, the same. Cuckoo QI, though, gonna replace Joseph Joestar. Or um, I didn't. I, I'm okay. I didn't think Pengo was a speed player, so this might be a little bit of a weird roster selection. I would expect it to see maybe like uh, Amira Kino two for this one, but maybe the map is a little bit of a difference. And I think this is going to get aborted. I think I'm not really I sure. Quickly really saw in chat that they only had three players in or something. Uh, uh, maybe so. I'm not really positive what's going on here. We'll find out shortly. Um, Pengo was in for... Yeah, they're not playing. They're just be awarded. Yeah. Pengo was in for TT2. Um, he did put up just under 750k. So, capable of playing, you know, decent. That map is, uh, 252 BPM, so a little bit faster than this. But obviously, the stamina not required the same way, but... Alright. Um... Yeah, I don't know, Ch China and having internet problems during OSU tournaments is a tale as, as old as time. I f feel like that's just... I, anytime you see a China team in OWC, 3 Digital World Cup, 4 Digital World Cup, like, there's going to be internet problems. There's just no way around it. Um, notably, though, if they have internet problems and it kind of causes things to delay, this gets a little rough for Argentina. Uh, I, I want to point out, like, it's 1.30 in the morning there. They start. They scheduled this match for 1 a.m. local. Um, so this gets pretty late. I mean, I have to assume that they're late-night gamers if they're willing to schedule to this time. But, man, it gets... Uh, that late-at-night thing, whereas it's just getting into, you know, the afternoon in, in China, it's, like, an interesting thing to keep track of if this match takes a while. Yeah... That's always, like, unfortunately, there's two teams playing, right? So if there's ever a team that has a lot of consistent internet issues, it also kind of affects the other team a little bit. But, uh, I mean, it's just something to kind of expect here. Uh, like we said, it's just not the first time this is happening. It's probably not going to be the last. Well, if China wins, it's maybe not going to be the last. <laughs> Hoping they have uh, their four players in this time, though. Yeah, I, I, it looked like we were starting, and now we're not starting. Um, oh, I don't, okay, well, well, we'll get it sorted out and we'll be, we'll be live, uh, with the actual gameplay, <laughs> hopefully shortly here. Um, this is, this is unfortunately a, a downside of OC tournaments from time to time. You have run into some technical difficulties, but players slowly making their way into the lobby. So we are going to be good to go here on map number three. No break hey, points we're, yet. We're going to get to see the map. Hey. Very soon. Here we go. All right, so we got to okay, get. Okay, we're all synced up. Oh, we're we'll, we, we, yeah, we're going to be synced up in about forty <laughs> combo. We will be. We will have eight players all on the same page and all doing the same thing at the same time. My goodness, it's a wonderful sight to behold, ladies and gentlemen. All right, so there we are. No out of five. Getting underway in earnest. This map really doesn't let up. Like, there is very little downtime once it starts. It's just this triple quint quad kind of thing going on for basically the rest of the map. But two and a half minutes of you know, 235 BPM bursts. Yeah, there's not much in terms of complexity in the way, like, these patterns are mapped. Uh, it's just fast. Um, or or they're, not, they're... <laughs> depending on who you ask. Yeah, I mean, they're... they're... <laughs> There's some level of density as well, I think, which is going to be ma uh, like the majority of the difficulty here. But yeah, we're looking at this being probably being one of the easier maps of the pool again. Uh... That being said, we did see a couple of breaks already from Richo down there from Argentina. So China will have a little bit of an early lead. It's about 100k or so, I believe, about all its different. Although the accuracy suffering on Milk Tea is going to help out Argentina a bit here. Shoutouts to Alden, by the way, his uh, first OWC map, I believe. Uh, yes, there's also a collab with Fairy, so both both of their first OWC maps. Yeah, cool to see new custom mappers getting their maps picked immediately Ooh. in the first match of the week. Like Salia, maybe the second break, as followed up by Penguo. That's oh, uh, not looking rough. good for Argentina. That's a bad spot to be in now. Four FCs still on the board for China, and only one for the Argentinians. 
Yeah, that was like right before a little bit of a, like a slower part as well here. So, I mean, China just no breaks yet. Still just holding a four way. And that's not what you want to see for Argentina, especially this being their pick. This might, this might put into question what they were looking at picking next. Because if they were trying to go for speed, it doesn't look like it's going to be the, the way to go in this match. China yeah, just this, says no. Yeah, this might not be the direction. And we talked about like they were not far apart on any, in any picks really. There's not a big amount of separate between these two games. There's the break um, from Burger Fox, so... And Kuku QI is going to follow up with that lead being 600k, though. I don't actually think there's enough for it to make you know, like Argentina. Dude, look Gosh. at the accuracies on the Argentinian team, though. That is tragic. Yeah. That are going in with a 100 cool. at the end, I think. Everyone over 99 on a speed pick of all things, right? Like, 800s being the most amount on their team. Uh, just those one breaks gonna make the difference there but yeah i mean gotta gotta look at china for this one it's not a it's not a skill set that argentina was really expecting china to be good at it looks like and yeah i mean they really showed up on this one and i i think you can't overlook the fact that people have been saying that this is not a very difficult map so even if you're against a team that is on paper maybe you perceive them not to be that great at speed they can still come out and do well on it and like you said i mean argentina arguably better in i'm putting that in quotes better at the map their accuracy as as you said was far superior across the board but that consistency just a little bit higher china able to breaks and you miss in the middle i mean you saw what their three scores were there for those players who did see you know somewhere between 620 and 680k it's just avoiding that break for for china that won the map straight up and now right. china with the break point what do they go into now that they've gotten the two really obvious picks out of the way well they do have the other free mod still uh that plays that that other free mod is essentially just an aim map though so it might just not be what they're looking for uh, I think they were probably just looking at like mod advantage stuff, but that is not a mod advantage map. That is just like a just a raw aim map, and you don't really you know you're not going to see any more than just two mods on that map, like from any team. I think so. Maybe not what they're looking at. Yeah, it. I I guess it could be like a nomad three angle, just non raw mechanics type of map that's not going to be you know something that's a pure aim or anything like that or a hard rock 2 um could be the case uh, there um so you go from the cs5 air 8 free mod to the cs 6.5 hard rock their hard rock players did really really well on quan so this makes a lot of sense for china holding on to that skill set yeah, this is actually a pick that I think you could expect Argentina to go for as well. They, it was their only other pick last round, but I think the map is fairly different. This is very slow for Hard Rock. This is a 145 BPM map with rhythm complexity. It's very unique, so it's not like any other map we've seen previously in this World Cup. There, There is just no equivalent in this slot. Uh, in, in this World Cup, that is. So I think this is probably a good pick for China, considering, like you said, their hard rock players did exceedingly well uh, on that other free mod. But also, this this does kind of share a, a few similarities. Uh, definitely looking at player accuracies for this one, though, I think it's kind of expected that a lot of accuracies are going to be pretty low on this. Like, I think a 99 is an exceedingly good score on this, so uh, just something to keep in mind as we're about to see this map for the first time. I feel like whenever you get one of these, because we not specifically like this map but we do see a decent amount of the lower bpm hard rock picks in tournaments in general they placed ack at such a premium because most players just don't play that sort of thing very much outside of you know that one map a week in a tournament at most so very curious to see how how people hold up in terms of accuracy we've seen argentina have some very good ack performances on the first couple of maps but you've seen china out comboing them and unless you have you know unless you're down at sub 90% against 98 99s that combo is going to be more important so we'll see if China can keep that kind of aspect of their play up or if uh, maybe Argentina can come back you know they need that they need that break point back pretty quickly here with this only being best of nine okay their head-to-head -head scores on any hard rock map in qualifiers is exceedingly close uh there's only like a 20k difference on both of the hard rock maps and qualifiers between these teams so this is going to be pretty spicy. I think it could kind of go either way. Yeah, it's uh, I'm looking here. Two point 
six million and two point four million, something like that. A couple hundred thousand points at most. Uh, yeah, this is the type of map in this particular matchup that could definitely be a very, very competitive one. We've seen, you know, China as we kind of briefly touched on, like China won their first two picks by one point two million points each. I think they're within like three thousand points on this actually, um, or thirteen thousand. So, uh, you know, oh. maybe they can keep that up. All right, you can you can already see this is a weird map. <laughs> Yeah, a lot of people getting caught off guard immediately off the bat, and pretty much a lot of really low accuracies, which again is, is kind of expected on this one. Uh, China do have actually really good accuracy coming off of this intro, which is pretty hard to keep up with, and Argentina is having a lot of issues keeping up with it. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of what we would expect to see. Some of those, you know, low 90s, high 80s, really not that surprising. Um, and multiple breaks. Boy, there is one combo on the side of Argentina. Meanwhile, two FCs and a near FC for China. This uh, is actually already 400,000 points apart. <laughs> and there's not much for Argentina to claw, claw back with. It's only just Rico. And, and by this point, there's not much he can do by himself. There's still just too many strong combos, but also a very considerable accuracy lead for the Chinese players here. I will say, if Cuckoo Q... Up. Okay, it doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. If Cuckoo QY had broken and Richo had held, that actually could have gotten interesting because they had yeah. the same combo with a decent amount of score still left. Um, but the break is just going to make that impossible as Cuckoo QY continues to hold on. And so does Mr. David. So this is going to be another pretty comfy win that's going to just grow here in this the ending key eye of this is so tricky too the rhythm changes are very very difficult China yeah. looking good on their own picks I, I feel like they planned well for this they're all three of their picks now um, have been very one-sided those are actually pretty good scores on this map those are very respectable it's hard to say because we don't have a reference this is the first match being played but honestly, you have to respect this course from, from China. That's a very good 2.7 million on this with like one misses on a few with solid accuracy in context uh, on, on all of their players. This was a fantastic pick for them. Yeah, that um, 97 AC from Strife in context of the lobby looks very, very good, <laughs> man. I tell you what, that's uh, that AC looks solid. And of course, Kuku Kui, 858K. I think that's a pretty good score. All right, DT3 now. Not so much speed in this. That hasn't been played for either side here, but um, yeah, a little bit of a, of a finger control pick here. Lots of lots of doubles, lots of quads, kind of what you would expect. Yeah, this is a cool one. One of that, it, you know, Hatsuki Yura, I feel like you just end up with like kind of cool rhythms in a lot of maps of their songs. Um, and this oh. one is... Actually, I take it back. China really did no play exception. this last time. Okay. But I like, the, and this is uh, one of the few non customs as well. This was a custom for a different tournament, though. Uh, so I guess it kind of still counts. Um, Hip Wall does, I think, cool things with his mapping. I Usually you get very unique maps from him. Mm -hmm. So hopefully this will uh, play well for both of these, both these rosters. I'm kind of wondering if. The accuracy game is going to be a similar story here because this is a pretty important factor in this map. Obviously, it's a very, it's like the complete opposite spectrum of what is considered accuracy. Right? Like last round or last map, we just had like some super low BPM with hard rock, so it's really hard because it's, uh, hard rock is always harder and harder the lower the BPM goes. Uh, Where this, in this case, it's, it's just kind of fast. It's just a typical finger control pick. We'll see if China can show the same story here. Um, they did have pretty low accuracies on the last round they played. I'm looking at like 96, 95. Uh, but it's a different map, so could change. Yeah, I mean, you go round over round. It's kind of hard to compare when the maps are relatively different. So, and also, I mean, at the end of the day, like we said, you know, even in maps where accuracy is at a premium, 
if you can get moderate ack and keep your combo up, that's going to be the most important part. So we'll see how things go here. Zelda already with the uh, very early break right at the beginning, but hopefully should not affect anything too much going forward. This is a decently long, again, all three of these two and a half to three minutes in the DT pool, so get some time to get into a rhythm and hopefully build up some decent combo for both sides. Also, still no extreme, so I wonder if he's just not here. Yeah, I can, only, like here, I can yeah. only assume he's not here. I don't know if he's in for the, the finger control as much, but this is still relatively fast. I mean, 209 BPM, but... I think they, the they played around really all the maps that you would expect them uh, to see him on, so I, yeah, I don't think he's here. <laughs> yeah, he's just he's just not here, which is kind of unfortunate, but it's still working out. Uh, Zeno, unfortunately, over there having several several breaks already. We've just gotten through the first Ki, third the way in. Actually, though, Argentina in the lead. Oh, I missed. I, I apologize. I missed uh, Burger Fox missing. So that would explain that. Yeah, they're kind of on equal footing right now. Uh, I think Burger Fox has had a, a little bit of an oopsie on a stream. Mode. Got a lot of misses, but it was only one pattern. Seems to have recovered pretty good. Uh, Zeta will miss again, though. Might swing things around. This certainly will, though. Yeah, look, Sally missing there exactly halfway through, too. You know Ooh. how that caps the score. But David finds a matching break. And there goes Penguo as well. Okay, so it's not too much. We might be seeing a lot one. of breaks. We're getting into the territory where this kind of becomes stamina a little bit. Uh, there's like no breaks leading up to this point, right? So even though it's not too fast, it's hard to keep up for this long. And uh, evidently, a lot of breaks on that section. It, it, I think it really rewards the people who did not. Uh, still three FCs on the board, just more for China right now. And they're going to take the lead off of that. Yeah, I actually think that might have just kind of decided it, especially with Lexalia and Penguo breaking again. Uh, and there goes Rito. Yep, so that's that's going to do it. That's going to be a second break point for China, and that's going to be them closing out the match here. Milty does find a late break, but yeah, just China holding on to their stamina better through that second PI um, was really kind of the nail in the coffin against Argentina because they were right in with them, and then they kind of had some breaks at the wrong time, and that was just, that was just the map. Uh, I think you really have to credit Kuku Kuki, who is uh, again top scoring on this one, pretty uh, by a pretty large margin. But throughout the whole match, actually, just solid performances. He did top score the Hard Rock too just now as well, so a solid asset for the Chinese team, and they will take it five to one. Yeah, uh, big big shout outs to Kuku. He top scored also the uh, the free mod. Pick free mod one. He, he yeah, uh, top scored yeah. on no. Uh, he top scored that on no mod, um, with CS5 <laughs> AR8 no mod, and then he comes in and, and top scores like the the stamina DT. And uh, you know he's clearly a pretty well rounded player. Um, definitely would give him you know their MVP for this for this win. But a good team performance, I think. Good good picks from China. Um, and they just got a couple break points. Argentina, nothing to really be ashamed of. I think China was just better. I don't really think there's anything they did outstanding wrong. China just played well, and that was what made the difference. Yeah, I mean, Argentina tried to play around the, their team's strengths, but sometimes it just kind of goes that way, where the other team is just stronger at your strengths. Uh, it was the case today, unfortunately. So China does move on. Uh, it is This was a, the first lower bracket match of the whole tournament, actually, so this does mean China will have another opponent. Uh, for Argentina, the, uh, Argentina, that will be it for the tournament, so we have to say goodbye to them. Uh, they played their two matches. Um, and China will move on. I'm not quite sure who they're facing against, but yep. uh, 